Guacamole. <laughs> Listen, I walk a million miles for one of your. What just for him? Tiger Beat. Tiger Beat. Tiger Beat. Tiger Beat what? Remember Tiger Beat? Tiger Beat magazine. Oh, we don't have anything to do with that magazine. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Is it really? Yeah. Is that girl still there? What's that girl? Sharon Lee. Girl that we used to know. Chuck Lauper. Not the girl. I don't know of it now. Is that a Chuck Lauper magazine? And, and is that a Lauper publication? Anne. Oh, yeah. Something here. Okay. At any rate, let's talk about go ahead and, uh, why we're doing here. Why we're here. Oh, go ahead. Okay. Uh, you guys, do you mind talking about the old monkey show? No. That's what we're going to be doing, the old monkey show. Right? Yeah. Monkey show. <laughs> we don't mind. Direct, okay. direct the questions to one person or the other, because otherwise we'll all talk at once. Okay, Mickey, how did the monkeys all begin? How did you get oh, the job? Jesus. Make it brief, okay? Um, That's enough. Read Tiger Beat. It was in every old issue that was ever written. You really want to know, right? Well, you can make it brief, you know, one. Uh, it was uh, different for each one of us. I went on an interview. Well, didn't you see like an ad in the variety or something? No, I didn't. My agent did. But there was an ad in the variety. Agent went on the interview and didn't get it, so I said Mickey's dead. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'll just briefly, I'll summarize. Davey, uh, could you let me make some contract? Yeah, please. Oh, shh. Shut up. Can you, maybe you can filter out his voice on yes. Those usually have a filter that says, like, English. <laughs> shit, you mean you're selling a tape to Tiger Beat? <laughs> no, I, I don't give the tape to him. Oh, I no, type yeah. it out first. Smart. So don't so worry. So briefly, about it. I'll summarize how how we, we all got it. Uh, Davey was under contract to Screen Gems mm -hmm. to produce the show. I uh, got it through an agent, Peter Tork, who's not with us today. Uh, got it through uh, Stephen Stills, who had heard about it yeah. and told Peter. And Mike got it through. Uh, I think Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Mike got it through. Uh, uh, I think it was a friend, a Randy Sparks or somebody like that, mm -hmm. who he was working with. Okay, now Tommy we, and Bobby. I'll uh, tell you how we get Writers for Screen Gems. Tommy and Bobby got it right at the. Uh, <laughs> Tommy and Bobby, were you were writers for Screen Gems? Yeah. Your music, Coldfish or something. In. Yeah, we were going to be the writing team of the Monkeys. There's going to be mm -hmm. Bobby, Tommy, Mickey, and Daddy. Tommy, or, you know, Mickey, Daddy, Tommy, and Bobby, whatever it is. Bobby, Daddy, Mickey, and Tommy. <laughs> Why do you have a Monkeys Golden Show hit so I we don't have one? I, I spotted from Mr. We were gonna be the writing like like the right like the John Lennon and Paul McCartney of the monkey, okay? Mm -hmm. And then for some reason somebody in Screen Gems thought we shouldn't have the part, so they, they promised us the part and then they uh, and then we didn't get the part. And and don't think bitter. I'm not bitter. <laughs> and that's so how he's hit. So at any great. rate, yeah. <laughs> so that's how we became the writers and <laughs> producers of the monkeys. Tommy and, and Bobby the were the first. wrote the majority, the uh, I would say ninety percent. The songs. Didn't they do the, the music at first? The first few records, didn't they play Produced the music? Them, yeah. I heard at one time that uh, you guys weren't even allowed to play the instruments. No, the we first never couple played records. the instruments. That's not true. Uh, Bob and I produced the records. Mickey they did produced all the singing. We did all the singing. I played drums on, I'd say, the, uh, quite a few of the tracks, not all of them. They told mm -hmm. us what to do. I didn't, we didn't play the horns. Singing it, <laughs> background. Yeah. He sang some background. He sang some background. He Four did a couple of hows and a couple of ahs. And uh, they made all the money, and uh, that was <laughs> Well, how long was the Boys and Heart team together? They still are. Too long, I'm telling you. Well, when did they start? A long time ago. Ten years. So, when did we start? 64? 64, yeah. So it's ten years last year. I'm an old 50s muffin. You wrote Pretty Little Angel Eyes. Yeah. Curtis Lee. Yeah. I liked all those old Thanks. songs. Did you write any other old songs like that back there? The Follow Up Under the Moon of Love. By Curtis Lee? Curtis Lee, yeah. yeah. Before that, Be My Guest, that's Oh, really? See, these right. guys are not Turkish, you know. You're dealing with <laughs> talented men here. Just because they got hung up with us guys, don't mean they're flakes. Yeah, how'd you guys come together now to uh, get together as the monkeys again? Our addict. Oh, we dinner at Mickey's restaurant. We are uh, always friends. We always, we always, I would say the four of us like got along um, really well, mainly because our the similarities in our backgrounds. Um, and uh, I did, and Davey and I did all, all exclusively all the lead singing. So naturally, we worked closer together, the four of us, because they were writing the songs and Davey and, and I were singing them. And uh, then uh, we've seen each other over the years. I've avoided Tommy as much as <laughs> I was seeing no. him for a while, but he went to go steady, and I said, no. <laughs> uh, We've seen each other you know, over the years, you know, just because we live in the same business and have the same friends and the same kind of business. And about uh, <laughs> not too long ago, it was not even a month ago, uh, Tommy called me and said that there was a promoter who um, was interested in uh, 
in doing some dates. The fool. And um, uh, we all had a good laugh. So we all laughed and said, "Well, uh, yeah, what will we do?" So they brought the dates over. So we, we started thinking what kind of show we would do, and we didn't want to go out there and do a. a you know, put a new contemporary kind of show together. We don't want to go and sing other people's hits, you see. No. And we hadn't had any sit too many since the moment. We didn't have so any too many hits of our own, new contemporary stuff, so we knew we couldn't go out there. Only and because we, didn't we haven't recorded for five years. We haven't recorded. We haven't well, been able to do it. You know, I never yeah, thought about sure? that. It's amazing. Um, Not that much. Yeah. So, uh, then, uh, I came up with a brilliant idea. Is this still the same question that he asked you? Yes. <laughs> How to show this thing we got together now. Oh. So in, in trying to come up with a concept for a show that would not be, you know, not be stupid and trite and just uh, your run-of-the-mill uh, kind of show, Since we I all thought to, to um, that, you know, how you have those, how they have those record albums come out on TV, you know, the Golden Great Hits of the Yeah, Beach so Boys you stuff, do right? one. Right, right. Right, well, I did one for the 50s, you know. Yeah. So, I, so I got the idea from that. I said, why don't we go out and do the Golden Great Hits of the Monkey show live? And, um, and just do all the old songs. And st instead of selling the kids an album, you know, which uh, we wouldn't get much out of it anyway. Yeah. We'll, we'll give them the album live. Well, why and so that's get, exactly uh, the concept of the show. Why couldn't you get Peter and Mike to come back? Uh, Mike does not do any uh, road work. Not anymore. No. And uh, Peter uh, isn't too crazy about it either, especially about uh, doing old songs. Well, he was he, the first one to leave the group, wasn't he? Yeah. 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 Peter was the first to leave, and he's into his own thing. And uh, Mike is into his own thing. And they didn't sing any of the original hits, so they wouldn't really have had that much to do. And uh, we have met together, the four of, the four of us, and uh, if we do something together uh, as the four, it'll be probably something at, like a TV or a special or a movie. And uh, who knows, uh, they may uh, end up doing a, a few of these shows somewhere. You never know. You just so we decided to go out like this in the band just to, uh, to see what would happen. A long time ago, when we used to do the Monkeys tour, Bobby used to play on the tour also. He was, uh, he was like he had his own band group, leader, and he also had, he used to lead the band for us, you see. And uh, we all were, see, we, were never, we never went out just like just the four of us as a regular group because we did, we weren't. We were we were a television show about a rock and roll group. Right. So the show we did, I don't know if you originally like saw it. Like a spinoff on the Beatles, Help and Hard Day's <coughs> Night stuff, wasn't it? That was well, the TV was, show. That, that was that was the TV show. show yeah. yeah, the road show was more like a, a, a it was more like a, a, a Vegas. Thing or a, a more theatrical, you know. Yeah. We, you would do your James changes, Brown and do Shack and do, yeah. We had another band that we played. Bobby's had a band at the time, and so it was much more theatrical than uh, than just a regular rock and roll. Not too long ago, didn't you do a horror movie? All the movies he's done. Oh, horror. <laughs> yeah. no, I might be mistaken. I, not a horror movie. I did a murder. Well, maybe movie. that's what I saw. Murder. I didn't see it, but I heard something about it. Oh, that was a long time ago. Yeah, and also you record some after the. That you guys broke mm -hmm. up first, you know, right? Yeah. A song called I Don't Do It. Oh, that was before. Yeah, it was that was monkey. before? That was before the Monkeys. I had a song oh, really? the Monkeys called Girl. Rainy Jane. It was one girl. girl was from a movie Star called Spangle. Spangle. Star Spangle. Right. Mike had a hit called uh, Joanne, right. which was a big hit. Right. I didn't have a hit. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have a hit. You all guys, you, like you've done Circus Boy when you were little. And, uh, uh, I did the monkeys when I was you little. You did the monkeys little. when you were little, and you were on stage, and I saw you do a Brady Bunch, and I saw Boys and Hard do yeah, a Bewitch. Yeah, check on that. Wow. I wrote Real Angel Eyes, Bobby Hurt So Bad. Bobby Hurt So Bad, yes. You did? Yeah. Who, who anyway, Tim, while we're having dinner one night, when he came with the Golden Great Hits, then Davey said, well, that's a good idea. Why don't we add to that the Golden Great Hits starring the guys that sang them and the guys that wrote them? Yeah. And we sort of got the other Tony. And the <laughs> that's and so that's kind of the concept of the show, it's just like one of those albums you see on TV. Yeah. And the radio ads, I don't know if you've heard the radio ads. Uh, that, that yeah, we did. Are they right. playing that here? The one I did? The one I produced? The no, no, I haven't, haven't heard, heard it. it. They oh. might be playing. I haven't heard it. You see, the thing it's, is, it's just, when you don't have the we anywhere, everybody says, hey, David Jones, the monkeys. Who cares about Mickey, David Jones? <laughs> 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 no. they say, funny hey, they always say to me, hey, hey Mickey Dolan. Yeah. The monkeys, what was the other guy? Hey, the short man, guy. Hey, the really like guy. songs did the whole shtick, you see. So, we go out on the road, like we do. I've been out and done a bunch of stuff on my own. Nikki and I have entertained together at different things, charity things and different things. And we've never really gotten together over the idea of the monkey scene, monkey tune, because that's ten years ago when we did all these tunes. But 
the thing is, we realize at this point that whenever we go any place, the people remember us from the monkeys. Now these are the guys that wrote the tunes, and we're the guys that sang them. So why should we go out and sing "You've Got a Friend" or sure. "Bridge Over Troubled Water" mm -hmm. or uh, "Your Kids Dingling Dingling" or "My Dingling"? Even though, though we'd mean, like to sing some. I mean, we can do a lot of shtick on stage, but instead of that, we sing 12, 15 songs that were all top 20 or top 10 tunes that everybody that knows anything about the monkeys or coming to see the monkeys, they'll. They'll hear the tunes that they heard us sing. I'm and gonna, we're going to a lot of towns that we never went to before, the small, the small like cities. Like this city. Kids never yeah. had a chance to see us. Not like St. Louis, we were here. At, yeah. you know, and the show has also been running for five, <coughs> seven years on television. And right. so now we have uh, well, those kids that were not even time. born yeah. when we started doing the show in 1965 yeah. are going to be out there saying, hey, Davey, Mickey, yeah. but Tommy, Bobby, you know? And uh, that's about the extent of the whole thing. Does people Tom? Say, well, yeah. don't you feel kind of funny about going out and doing the old stuff? Well, I mean, I'm sure that Tony Bennett sings uh, oh, well, San Francisco. San Francisco yeah. He's only got one hit to sing. Sure. You know? I mean, we've got a lot of them. <laughs> sure. And that's what we're going to do. Does Bobby and Tommy get to do songs like the theirs, like Alice Long? Yeah, but I, I mean, think that one they're doing, I wonder. I wonder she's what doing she's tonight. Doing Just before they go off and do those two songs, we tell everybody to go and get a sandwich. <laughs> 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 I mean, uh, Maybe so modest as yes. you probably know. I knew Alice Long was big in St. Louis. We should have worked it up. <coughs> he's 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 when, oh, yeah. when Bobby came to me and begged me to go out <laughs> on the road, I said, sure, man. I mean, I don't want you to go any greater than you are. You're getting old. And uh, you need the break. And I need the break. Okay. And uh, Mickey's saving up for his operation. Uh -huh. And that's about it. Tony says, if you don't go, guys, I'm going to bust your noses. You understand? So there we go. It's only, oh, uh, David, I've seen the movie Head. Oh, and yeah, I don't I understand that. The movie? <laughs> Is there a plot to it? I don't understand the movie. It's, I thought um, I like it, but I don't plot, understand it. Yeah, the plot, it, it's a very episodic movie. It's probably the first major episodic movie to come out of, uh, out of a major Hollywood film production company. Um, it was... Um, the plot, more or less, was a. It's that chapter. An abstract. Two, um, four. It was kind of an abstract. It's an amplifier, isn't it? An amplifier. <coughs> it was. Um, I know. <laughs> uh, that's what I'm trying to think of. I don't uh, know, but Jesus Christ. Shut up a minute. I'm going to have to go and shave in a minute. <laughs> Wait. It was, I'll uh, have to ask you a question. It was I saw a story the of the monkeys, um, <laughs> and kind of a. Uh, yeah, this is good. <laughs> an animated uh, look at, at the whole Hollywood um, the motion picture syndrome. And uh, using us as the example, it more or less uh, exemplified the, uh, the creation of, a, of an entity uh, in Hollywood and their rebellion and their con confusion and their, uh, the, which is the black box. The black box was like, the, we used to, we used to joke a lot about when we were on tour uh, about going from one black box to another, from a black limousine into a black garbage entrance of a hotel, into a, a hotel room, into a black tunnel of an amphitheater. And, you know, we never saw anything but these black tunnels. And um, when we wrote the movie, because the four of us uh, more or less uh, conceptualize the movie. Uh, and and Jack Nicholson yeah. the screen, did the screenplay. So we met with Jack Nicholson and Bob Rafus at one time for three days. And uh, out of that came the uh, the movie. And the plot is really just... Um, Stardust ten years before. Well, yeah, but even more yeah. abstract than that. It was very Fellini-esque, you know. It was, uh, it was very abstract. I mean, you had to really just... Did you see that recently? Had, why'd you jump over the bridge? Yeah, it was on TV. You had to yeah, jump it makes more sense now than it did when I saw it then. Yeah, why'd you but jump you over really the bridge? You really have to just look at it for, for, uh, really on its face value for the effects, for the, the visual imagery, and... Um, Some of the chroma key work if, and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, the I like the Victor Mature. Yeah, yeah and, and you really have to look at it as symbolism, like Victor Mature symbolizing the big traditional classical Hollywood Stepping on the new little uh, yeah. little Hollywood freaks running around, mm -hmm. and it was and the guru was sitting in there in the steam bath, and Peter getting into the trip. He said, <laughs> "For the master thinks that." And Sonny says, "How about some more steam?" You know, and pulls the thing. It was very symbolic. Can you hear me? So if you yeah. try to look at it, <laughs> try to look at it too deeply. <laughs> try to look at it too deeply. 
it doesn't make any sense at all. Most most people didn't understand. I had a little girl come up to me one day uh, in a parking lot after she'd seen the movie. And you remember the sequence about the, the war sequence? When we were yes. showing the footage of Vietnam yes. and, and, and making an analogy to kids screaming at a at a concert and ripping our clothes mm -hmm. off and stuff like that. Uh, Bert Schneider was always really big on the anti-war thing. He was, uh, I don't know if you remember, he was the producer that at the uh, Academy Awards last year read the telegram from the North Vietnamese. Oh, yes. Right. And he won producer. the Academy Award for Hearts and Minds. At any rate, uh, she came up to me, she says, I don't know how you could do that. You're advocating war, you know? And the impression she got is that we were um, advocating war, that we were supporting war because she didn't understand that you know, the, the analogy that we tried to make. So and, I told uh, you there she was, was a lot of confusion about the, uh, there was a lot of confusion about the movie, but we all didn't mind, I, I didn't mind, we had all agreed that we did not want to make just an hour and a half long monkey show. And uh, that was, the, uh, that was un a universal agreement between all of us, that we, that we did not want to do that. We didn't want our names on it, we didn't want to name the monkeys on the movie. <laughs> We didn't want it to have any lights. <laughs> we didn't want it to have light. completely dark. And now let me just add one thing. That little girl that said that, yes. I beat the living shit out of her. <laughs> and that was it. She didn't ask any so, questions. So, um, uh, Davey, quoted in Teen, I beat the living shit out of little girls. <laughs> Can I come so, up see you again tonight? <laughs> so, uh, and we got exactly what we wanted, you know. I'm very, I'm very proud of that movie. I think it's probably the finest thing that we did collectively. I think it was one of the finest uh, things that Mickey did, as far as Mr. Nailers in Turkey, as far as anybody else's performance, it was like uh, well, you've never Toy Town. That's true. I mean, what I was that, that bridge you jumped off of? Was it? In Long Beach. Was it a real bridge? Yeah. Did you really jump off it? Sure. Uh -huh. Sure. 500 feet. Right <laughs> Where did you jump? Sure. Well, how, how did you do that scene? I always love that scene. What do you mean, how I did it? I didn't do anything. I <laughs> jumped. Were you really in that black box? No, no, we had some guy down below in the rowboat catch us. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a real vacuum cleaner? <laughs> yeah, it was a real vacuum cleaner. How do you guys do it? <clears throat> no, it was uh, strange. All from beautiful effects. I think it was a fantastic. Yeah, for effects, I think it was one of the greatest movies. These guys are going overtime ever been. in the next room. Meanwhile, Tiger Beat is getting uh, you know, <laughs> four pages here. Well, not ahead. Uh, so go ahead. Next question. question. Okay, next. in your concentrator, you were talking about. Better ask him a question. No, he doesn't. Know. <laughs> um, Nobody else knows anything about the movie. Ask you guys a question. Hey. In your butts. Okay, what was something about you me. diving diving into a three foot kiddie pool on stage? What? What? I read this somewhere. It was about it was on at a concert. and You dived into no, it. Jumped into the pool. Shut up and let me answer the goddamn question. Do you remember drowning in emotional stage? Can you get Peter Tork on the phone? Where's the phone? Oh Christ! Just fly Peter in and he's on steam. <laughs> Listen, uh, I jumped into the pool at the Hollywood Bowl. Oh. And I just happened to grab the mic off him before he did it. It was just instinct. I thought it was a good move. So, he was so I would be on the road with Tommy and Bobby. Right? <laughs> and not selling any tickets. Do you still do your <laughs> hat and cane numbers that you used to do? <laughs> it's it's funny. We do one in the show. We, we hey, listen, baby, man. I'm in this goddamn group, too, you understand? I've had to butt in. I butted in this whole thing and I'm like the yeah. ass. Tell them about your hat and cane. My hat and cane, I'm sorry, got lost in the mail coming over here and they're going to do a dance routine between them. I'm selling tomatoes in the audience for that particular night. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, Just don't call Fred Astaire. No, no. We, we do a little tiny bit. We also do a psychedelic number. We turn on the light on our feet. It's a strobe effect. It's we can't afford a real strobe, so I just turn the switch on on our feet. <laughs> Possibly can't! Mm. Mickey. It's sick of the lick, actually. <laughs> sick like, of the lick. <laughs> Mickey and I, uh, as far as the tap dancing thing, we touch upon it. We have a straw hat and some canes. Mickey has a whole box of shit, and he come up with it yesterday at the rehearsal. And so, meanwhile, we're all going one, two, three, four, two, two, and we just learned a little bit of a step to a little number. Happened to be written by Harry Nielsen. And we have to have a hit with it. What we did is feature in the show, as you've seen in the program, songs that were written mainly by Tommy and Bobby, because they wrote the majority of these songs. And also, very few people know that Carol King wrote uh, quite a few of our hits. Harry Nielsen had his first hit with us. Neil uh, Diamond. Neil Diamond had his first major hit with us. I'm a believer. And Paul Williams yeah. had his first uh, hit with us. And there was some other ones. Paul Williams? Uh, uh, Someday Man. Uh, Someday Man. And well, it was, that wasn't a hit. It was, well, no, it was a hit. I mean, not a big hit, but it was a, it was like the first hit. It was the first record he'd ever had recorded with a major artist. 
As far as well, why didn't you make it here? As far as our show, the show that we have is a show of songs mainly. There's a small amount of conversation. We don't have time to get into any great big production because of the facilities and the different uh, places in the in the different places that we're playing. In daytime, um, there's no lighting we can use. The show consists of just performance, a bit of conversation, a couple of pieces of comedy here and there within the show. And until we get into a facility where we're able to do more with these tunes, instead of just play them, it's enough. And if you see the show tomorrow, you'll realize it is, you know, a complete show as it is. But if we're going into other venues into a different facility where we're able to get into lighting changes, into strobe lights and into dry ice and into hat and cane numbers with other dancers, not just us guys, we're the stars of the show, you know, we're featured. Maybe there'll be other dancers with us at the, at the point, you know, at that point. But right now at Six Flags, we're limited to what we can do and we only have a certain amount of time and most of it is, it, is singing. I do a little thing and we all do a little dance thing together just for the fun of it. Yeah. By any stretch of the imagination, we're not uh, we don't have anything just um, um, too choreographed. It's all just kind of natural and uh, it's fun. So it's it's fun. Funny. It's and like that's the idea of the show. You know, we started together. You know, we all met. You know, like the four of us were together before the four of them were together. We all sat on talk for days and weeks. You know, and, uh, and that's just about so it. So here we are together. Ten years there. later, the same way we started. You know, we're now singing all the songs. But it's not a chore. You see, it's not a chore for us to go out and sing these tunes. It's it's what? Chore? Yeah. Chore. That's what I said. I said a chore. <laughs> a chore? I didn't say a chore. I said a chore. You it's summertime and it's fun. You're telling me how to speak? <laughs> it's just a great trip. Jesus Christ, you, know, you guys ain't learned to speak in 200 the songs years. That, that we wrote, the songs that they sang. It seems like, like the right thing to do. And uh, Tony got the whole thing together. And the people who are booking it are very excited about it. And everybody knows that we're together the four of us and uh, it's fun questions? it's honest and there's no questions and that's what we're just there's no I mean we just sing in straight music we've got we've got four guys that are real competent musicians and uh, we're just gonna have some good times and sing some harmonies and sing some tunes that you know we've got 15 tunes that uh, if anybody has ever listened to a monkey album mm -hmm. they'll realize no, there's a four of us yes were you and uh, yesterday Bobby <laughs> uh, still write songs for other people <laughs> Sure. Well, Bobby had just had a couple. Re re he's, he's the most prominent of the group right now, Tim. He just had two hits: so "Keep On Singing" by Helen Reddy, and uh, something you wrote that? wrong with me by uh, Austin hey, Roberts. You know, you know, you know, <laughs> on the back page of the book, you'll see I have an ad for the book. I wrote yeah, well, on the inside cover. I have a book I found how to write a hit song. You wrote that yourself? Oh. You collaborate, Jason. And it's uh, been yeah, Jason. Yeah. Yeah. You see, so it's not, not see, them. I didn't know it it's far. for entertainment, <laughs> not that Mickey and I have worked together a little bit, and Tommy and Bobby are writing with different people. Maybe I do yard work. It's just a gathering <laughs> of four entertainers and putting together something that was, I just repeated a role that I did 12 years ago on Broadway in a show called Oliver. I played the Artful Dodger. Well, two years ago, I did the same role in for a Los Angeles company and San Francisco company, a big, lavish production. It's not like a step back, you know what I mean? It is a continuous, continuous continuation of what we are doing and what we are. We can never shake, hey, aren't you David Jones of the Monkeys? Same as Groucho Marx, the Marx Brothers. Aren't you, you know Groucho I mean? Marx of the Beatles? Uh, yeah. you know, so it's, it's okay. nothing that's needed to be explained in any great length. Just that we have hit songs and we're here to yeah. sing them to people that haven't heard us and seen us live. As far as Mike and Peter, there's every possibility of them joining us in a future date. But it's not feasible at this point because of the venues we're playing and because of the kind of show. Because they don't want to play on the road right now. Because they don't sing. And they don't. They don't sing. Let's <laughs> well, go on to something else. Okay. Last We're question. Let you guys go. Huh? This will be last question. I'll let you guys go. Now you guys were once like you were number one in the country. You're like the American Beatles, mm -hmm. and you couldn't even walk down the street without being mobbed. Do you hope, wish that you could be number one again, or do you don't want it that way? As far as myself, I feel exactly the same as I did when I used to hold the, the, the spear in the school play. And I feel no different. I am the same person with uh, 20,000 people out there or 20 people out there. My performance does not change. As far as my feeling, of course, there's more money when there's more people. Mm -hmm. But as far as feeling uh, inhibited about uh, not having the uh, success or the adulation or whatever, um, I feel What's no... 
no uh, it's no sweat to me. It has its advantages and it has a dis its disadvantages. Uh, naturally, like maybe said, when there's more people, there's more, there's more money. But um, once you've done it and had it, uh, the the, uh, the the drive and the desire for it, it doesn't exist as much anymore. And in a way, that's a disadvantage because you all, you don't have as much ambition. I've found that over the last few years, and since the circus, and since all these things, I don't have those kind of driving ambitions that, uh, for fame and fortune that that, that keep you that keeps somebody going on and pressing and pressing and pressing harder and harder to achieve success. So I've kind of become a little, a little lazy and, you know, a little complacent because I've already done it. I was 19 when we started. <coughs> he was 20 when we started the movies. I mean, that's, that's, that's pretty young, you know, and uh, to have done what Sorry. we did. Yeah. And Bobby and, and I were both been 22. writing for 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> He's been writing for 20 years. Like he had a hit song 20 years ago, didn't he? I mean, I would like it to happen, that. but I, but it's going to take. It would take somebody else to really. To get I mean, it as together. far as musical influences, I'm sure a lot of people I identify with Pretty Little Angel Eyes, or will identify with his uh, latest one, Keep On Singing by Helen Reddy. You know, in time from now, but we're not schlocks. We'll be around entertaining for the next 20 years. I mean, I understand there's a lot of hit groups around pulling in thousands and thousands, but. You take uh, Rod Stewart and put him in down South in uh, in uh, downtown St. Louis, and St. nobody would know who yeah, the hell he was. You take his face or my face, mm -hmm. and they know who we are. And so there's that kind of thing going for us. Yes. Not that we want his success, because we've had his success, the kind of success that he's getting now. Mm -hmm. It's a whole different ball game, but it's just a continuation of what we are. We're just uh, carrying on entertaining. I mean, he does theater, I do theater. They write new songs every day. I mean, and this is what we are, four entertainers joining forces to See, put out what happened one and trying to please that, piece the fans, of energy. What, what Bobby and I came up with, when we read the script, you know, and you know, we were going to be the writing monkeys, and then it didn't work out for us to become the monkeys for various reasons. Politics. Uh, you know, <coughs> they wanted him to be president. There was a void in the, in the American music at the time. There was a, like a void for something to happen, you know, and we knew this project was coming on. And our music, became like a, a happy-go-lucky type of music. We've always been linked with our music from Clarksville to I Want to Be Free to Stepping Stone by I Wonder What You're Doing Tonight. Our music was always like to make people happy. Uh, the, like the voice and heart sounds like happy, ha happiness, good times, summertime, bubblegum music. Mm -hmm. And so when four of us got together all this music, it, it created that, it was like a new image out there. Like the Beatles had checked out and the Stones had checked out and there was this new thing happening. It was all this happy, smiling, go lucky, make everybody feel good music. That so you could see every week on TV. Yeah, so we were like noted for that, you know. So, and in fact, they wrote a song once uh, by the 1910 Gum Fruit Company, and it was called Bubblegum Music. And they sort of called Bobby the King of Bubblegum Music as writers, you know. And it went, you know, where well, now the bubblegum music make me feel so good, the good, 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 give me more, more, more of that bubblegum music. Tommy Boys and Bobby Hart, I wonder what she's doing tonight while the monkeys sing Valerie. <laughs> 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 and it was the ten records, you know. Yeah, but it was like, uh, they, they, they wrote that song because of what we did and, and what the four of us, the six and of us, stood again, for. Like, then again, Making people feel good. And that's what we're doing now, making people because they want to see for it. For the first the time, that, it makes sense again what you just said about Tommy Boys and Bobby Hart and the monkeys and what happened to Valerie. Well, all of a sudden, ten years later, some guy turns around and does uh, MGM, uh, Jeff Berry, and does that record, you know what I mean? Yeah, the reunion. It just is a changeover, a changeover. It's not that it's our time again, it's just that the desire is there once more to go out in front of the people. Yes, you don't have okay. to tear anything uh, off or send anything in. As, so, as soon as Chuck, Chuck Lawford sends me my share of all the money that he made, I'll, I'll <laughs> this copy. you can print this. I think if you can ask Tony, since he's been talking to the people who are booking us, he knows well. like the feeling of the, of, of the people out there wanting to see the four of us together, you know? Well, it's really nice to have you guys back together again. Cause that's great. Well, we appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate your interest. Okay, you thank you a lot. Too. Can we get uh, a great picture? Just.